Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Herbert Wertheim School of Public Health and Human Longevity Sciences Welcome Back event, or simply a welcome event. It's such a pleasure for me to welcome you today, and I'd like to acknowledge that our new school, it's situated on a campus that's built upon land once part of the territory of the Kumeyaay Nation. UC San Diego community holds a great respect for the land and the original people of the area where our campus is located. The university is built on the unceded territory of the Kumeyaay Nation, and today, the Kumeyaay people continue to maintain their political sovereignty and cultural traditions as vital members of the San Diego community. We acknowledge their tremendous contributions to our region and thank them for our stewardship. Today is a beautiful day in San Diego. It's the first day of fall, the autumnal equinox, and we begin teaching and learning efforts inside our campus classrooms tomorrow. So it's an exciting time uh, to be a learner, a worker, or a teacher in public health. We are beginning this term amidst global efforts to mitigate one of the largest uh, public health emergencies that I've seen in my lifetime, uh, the pandemic of SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19. And our world is also grappling um, with really important public health issues around equity and justice, with our community making some very important contributions to the national conversations that are happening about structural and systemic racism, gender inequities, gender construction, patriarchal practices, inequities in access to healthcare that leads to less than optimal health outcomes. So this is a context that's gonna shape our experiences in the school this year. It's gonna shape the conversations that we have with each other in the hallways, It'll shape our curriculum and the approach that we use to deliver that curriculum. Now, in thinking about the curriculum and being in our classrooms, I wanna share with you first all of the things that we're doing on campus to minimize the risk of transmission of infections. That might be top of mind for you, whether you're a student or you're an employee. Uh, you may be familiar with the Return to Learn program that was established in May of 2020 at UC San Diego. This university, instead of closing its doors, said, we think that we can find a way to have academic life alongside a pandemic. And so we were able to welcome students back to campus uh, last year in an altered format, but that format has really been instructive for how uh, things will go this year. For example, we, on a daily basis, track the regional, national, and global epidemiology of uh, infections and of cases uh, of COVID-19. We have a public dashboard that's available to everyone in the UC San Diego community and outside that shows where things are with infections on the campus. It incorporates data from our hospitals, um, hospital bed counts, as well as what's happening with mortality um, from those who are hospitalized. We have an epidemic modeling process that helps us to incorporate where things are uh, in our region with infections and how effective our vaccines are. You may be familiar with our nationally renowned wastewater monitoring program. We were the first in the country to begin to look at what's going on in our sewage systems because it can help us detect um, whether or not there will be infections happening in individuals before they even begin to feel respiratory symptoms. And all of the buildings and dorms on the campuses have had updated attention to their ventilation systems so that we can ensure that the air quality um, within the buildings is, is optimal. We also have a culture of care. So this is where um, we care for each other by um, getting our vaccinations. It's a mandatory status on the campus unless uh, there are, is an exemption warranted. We make testing for uh, infections very easily accessible. We ask that you monitor symptoms daily. Uh, there's a tracker for that. We promote physical distancing. We have masking policies and we do contact tracing and quick interventions if isolation and quarantine is necessary. So hopefully all of those things taken together give you a sense of comfort in being uh, in our learning uh, environment this year. Another exciting thing that's happening in the school is our strategic planning process. It's been designed to include everyone in the school and to incorporate perspectives from the partners that we have for the school. 
It's allowed us to articulate our school's vision for a more just and healthy world through public health innovation, education, and service. And our mission together is to cultivate the next generation of diverse public health professionals and leaders through innovation and transformational education. We also want to advance scientific discovery, how we disseminate those that discovery and how we implement it in our communities. And we wanna work with diverse communities to improve determinants of health and foster community-led asset cultivation and innovation. We've also uh, made a commitment to certain practices and behaviors in all aspects of our school's life so that the experience that we have as a student or as an employee is optimal and it serves both our campus and our wider community. Those values are respect, humility, compassion, integrity, justice, trust, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And these things are important for where we are today and where we plan to be in the future. We have a lot of work ahead of us and I welcome you to a school where the work that we do can sometimes be slow, it can sometimes be frustrating, and it requires a tremendous amount of listening, respectful dialogue, and trust. But it's also a place where you can find your purpose in public health. And so as you embark upon this journey uh, along this school year, I'm wishing you luck in finding your purpose in public health. You'll be exposed to our amazing uh, staff, our amazing academics, uh, other amazing students around you. And I wish you luck in also finding great friends in public health. One of the best things about training and working in public health for me has been the ability to gain brilliant friends. They feel like sunshine in human form, you know, after days of endless rain. They're the kind of friends who believe in me and who love me for everything I am. And I wish the same for you. I believe that great schools don't just teach people, they change people. And together, we're going to see the value of listening, hearing, being able to grow and change our minds. So at this time, I'd like to have you hear from those who are pivotal and instrumental in helping our academic uh, programs work. And we're going to start first with our Associate Dean for Education and Student Affairs, Dr. Kimberly Brower. So at this time, uh, Dr. Brower. Thank you um, so much for those beautiful words and for the introduction. Um, we are really excited about um, starting this new school year. It's it's going to look a little different. It will look different than last year, um, but we hope that it's we're transitioning into something even better than um, what we've seen before. So I wanted to share a little bit with you about what to expect. So our public health faculty have been spending months really carefully considering the design of their courses. Um, you will really see that reflected in pandemic resilient syllabi where uh, they've taken into account flexibility and how to quickly pivot from one modality to another because we realized we're, we're in a state of transition. But with that said, 80% um, of our bachelor's in public health uh, courses are slated to be in person this quarter, and 73% of our public health classes overall will be in person. Um, expect a mix of in-person and remote experiences, whatever your course is designated at. I've talked to people who, uh, instructors who are teaching remote courses, yet they still plan to have an occasional in-person activity. Uh, likewise, uh, remote courses will be taking advantage of, um, in-person courses will be taking advantage of remote platforms for uh, guest lectures or things like problem solving sessions. So it will be a, a creative use of uh, technology and in-person learning. Um, we really see this start of the school year as an important transition period where hopefully our hard work and diligence will make it possible for being fully in person in the future. But whatever the modality, um, you can expect to be introduced to the fundamentals of public health as well as really cutting edge public health techniques, policies, study designs, and interventions. Um, 
Reflecting really an expanding job market and increased interest in public health degrees in the wake of the pandemic, we saw a record number of applicants, especially to our graduate programs, and our undergraduate program has increased 60% as far as the number of majors. So you can expect a really highly diverse student body. Students hail from throughout California, throughout the U.S., and really all over the globe. Um, just Students I've run into come from Mexico, India, China, Bangladesh, Uganda, and Peru. So I'm hoping that you'll enjoy these diverse voices as they really enhance your educational and classroom experience. So this large cohort of student, students, um, they're going to be enrolled in six different public health degrees. They're being taught and mentored by over 100 uh, faculty with more than 50 funded research groups that are supporting all sorts of research activities, a lot of them really focused on reducing health disparities or informing and designing public health interventions to impact both local and global public health. So we have joining with us today the directors of three of our public health programs, in particular the Bachelor's of Science in Public Health, the Master's of Public Health, and the doctoral program in Biostatistics. Uh, but first, I have the distinct pleasure of passing on the mic to the future director of our Preventive Medicine Residency Program, um, Dr. Jill Whalen. She'll be sharing a bit about this program, which is really a wonderful program that trains clinicians in the latest public health method, methods. So it's really a powerful and impactful combination of skills. So with that, I'll end here and Dr. Whalen, you can start. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Dr. Jill Wallen. I'm the Associate Director of the General Preventive Medicine Residency Program. We're just really excited to be part of the Herbert Witherum uh, School of Public Health. And uh, let me just give you a, an idea of how we fit in. So uh, our program is a medical residency program. Uh, we've been in existence since 1984. And we train uh, people who have received their MD or DO degrees, and they come to us for their graduate medical education. So they are house staff at UC San Diego. Um, when they're with us in their two years of training, um, they receive a master's in public health. And uh, that makes us unique amongst medical residencies. Uh, we are, you know, we do have a clinical emphasis, but we also are really the bridge between medicine and public health. And that's how our training is focused. Uh, to join our program, uh, we do require one year of a clinical uh, residency, really the traditional intern year for um, medical residents. And uh, then we have a two-year program, and our program in particular trains five residents uh, each year. So we currently have 10 residents in our program. So because we are a unique specialty within medicine, uh, we, have, uh, we use this to try to explain to other doctors because often they don't understand really uh, what preventive medicine is. And as you can see, it, you probably can't read everything on this slide, but what we're trying to show is that it's very diverse training with really an emphasis on public health. You can see the, the uh, areas of public health that we receive training in, epidemiology, biostats, behavioral medicine, um, in addition to our clinical uh, services that we provide that emphasize lifestyle medicine uh, increasingly. Uh, in our specialty. And then the careers uh, are also very diverse. Uh, you can see that some people do go into clinical careers, but often uh, our residents go into academia or government jobs with uh, government public health agencies, et cetera. So if you want to copy this slide, because I can't go through it all, um, this really defines our, uh, our residency and, and what we end up doing career-wise. 
a little bit more about our residency at UC San Diego in particular. Our director, Linda Hill, is very involved in a wide variety of research and clinical services areas. Uh, we also have two young assistant directors who are very active in research and, and also providing clinical services. I do want to highlight uh, Dr. Sanidi, who is leading our lifestyle initiatives, and it just continues to, to grow as far as clinical settings and also research in lifestyle medicine. Very excited about that. Um, and then just highlights of what we do. Our, we have a very community-based residency. That means most of our clinical work is done outside of the university setting in community health centers. Also, uh, refugee health programs have been a, a big area of, uh, that we've been involved in. And in fact, Dr. Hill is working right now on a cl providing clinical services at the border. And then uh, throughout the two years of the residency, uh, people need to do work in research, providing clinical services, and then also working at the public health department, um, getting experience. Sorry, I muted myself. Uh, and uh, we provide the in-service exam for all residencies nationally. We direct uh, the annual uh, Preventive Medicine Board Review course. We play leadership roles in a lot of the organizations. And um, Dr. Hill, in fact, is chairing the Preventive Medicine Conference this year. And I did that in the past. And we're really considered, I mean, if we do say so ourselves, we. We are a model for other programs. Uh, we present a lot at national conferences showing them how we do things in our residency. So um, we, we have many people copy us in that respect. So uh, if you like more information, we do have a website. Um, also, you can contact our, our, uh, our program coordinator. But um, again, very happy to be part of the School of Public Health here. Thank you. And now I think that I am to pass the mic to Dr. Trinidad. Thank you, Dr. Wallen. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Dennis Trinidad and I direct the undergraduate program in public health. And on behalf of the BSPH, I'd like to welcome our incoming freshmen uh, and transfer students, as well as our wonderful continuing students. So uh, some of the things that make the, the Bachelors of Science in Public Health unique is that we're the only undergraduate program currently uh, in all of UCSD Health Sciences. And Health Sciences uh, also includes the SCAGS School of Pharmacy, uh, as well as the School of Medicine. So not only is our program positioned at the intersection of primary care medicine and public health, but uh, we also have um, uh, one of the most diverse undergraduate programs on campus, as uh, Dr. Brower alluded to earlier. Uh, we have over 600 undergraduate students majoring in the BSPH, uh, with substantial proportions being first gen, uh, BIPOC, LGBTQIA, PEL eligible, and international students. Uh, but in addition, our instructors are also very diverse, including those uh, who are from disadvantaged backgrounds themselves, uh, from rural locations, uh, being first gen students themselves, uh, LGBT and persons of color. So you can rest assured that your instructors will have shared many of the same experiences as our students. Uh, and it's because of this that our faculty relate very well to our students and our student instructor bonds uh, are really quite close. Um, so before I hand things off to Dr. Pratt, I just uh, want to reemphasize the points that Dean Anderson and Dr. Brower made on what an important time it is for, uh, for folks to be studying public health. Uh, and we're glad that you're here with us and we're excited to see you all this fall. Thank you, Dr. Pratt. Uh, well, uh, good afternoon to everybody. And uh, thanks Dr. Trinidad from 
uh, for passing on the mic to me. Thanks, Dean Anderson and Dr. Brower for the introductions and Dr. Wellen as well. I'm in fact a, a board certified preventive medicine and public health physician and really delighted to be the director of the MPH program here. And let me start by saying that you're here at the right time and in the right place. We're a new dynamic school of public health and at no time in my lifetime has it ever been more clear that public health is absolutely central to uh, our, our lives today. Public health is a discipline that brings together science and social justice. And if you haven't realized over the last year how critical those are to our, our health and well being, um, you, you obviously have, have been in a different place than most of us. So, this is a great time to be in public health and no school of public health is complete without a master's degree in public health. We're new, we're not quite as new as the school, but we're almost as new. We're in our, starting our fourth year with our largest class yet. So I wanna welcome our 50 some new students and welcome back our 30 or so second year students and for the very first time tomorrow at 12.30, we will actually see those second year students in person along with many of the first year students. So this is a great time. We're coming out of a very challenging year, um, but it's also been a year which has pointed out just how critical public health is uh, to our state, our nation, and the world. So welcome. It's great to be part of this endeavor. And I will pass on uh, the baton to Florin Vida. Uh, Professor Vida is the director of the uh, Biostatistics Doctoral Program. Thank you, Dr. Pratt. <clears throat> I'm uh, Florin Vida. I am uh, the, a professor in the Division of Biostatistics and Bioinformatics. And I'm also the director of uh, graduate programs in biostatistics. And uh, this includes uh, the master's in Master of Science in Biostatistics and the uh, PhD in Biostatistics. Um, I just want to um, welcome all of our incoming students, both uh, undergrad and uh, graduate students. Um, we, um, uh, as biostatisticians, we participate uh, and are involved uh, uh, directly in uh, almost uh, all or all of the um, programs that uh, that the School of Public Health is offering, and we're looking forward to interacting with uh, with all of you during your stay in the program. Um, I would like to speak a little bit about um, uh, our programs in biostatistics and what makes them special. I'm used to saying that um, our programs are new, but um, um, that is probably no longer the case, um, especially compared to some of um, um, our other new programs in, uh, in the school. Our PhD is in its sixth year now, and our uh, master's is in its uh, third year. Uh, the programs are growing. We have uh, currently 24 enrolled PhD students. We have uh, 22 enrolled uh, students in the master's program. Um, the uh, students come from all over the world. We have uh, international presence and we have a, a national presence with a particularly strong um, uh, contingency of uh, students coming from California. And uh, um, we're, we're very happy to see uh, this, uh, this diversity in, uh, in our program. Um, our programs are, <coughs> both the master's and the PhD, are among the uh, few such programs in California and uh, um, are among the three such programs in Southern California, the other two being at uh, UCL, UCLA and the uh, uh, University of uh, Southern California. Uh, just briefly about uh, the biostatistics, the, um, of course, we're concerned with the analysis of the data uh, that's uh, generated by uh, public health and uh, biomedical studies. Uh, the study of biostatistics relies on uh, three legs of, uh, of, of the stool. Um, the uh, key one is quantitative, and it's concerned with statistics, probability, uh, but also uh, math and uh, computer science. The uh, second leg, which is uh, probably the more important, um, has to do with, uh, with the health sciences, which, uh, which provide the uh, grist for, for our um, biostatistical 
uh, mill. And of course, this uh, involves uh, research, involves clinical practice, involves uh, public health. Um, and uh, finally, um, communication plays a very important role in uh, what we do as uh, biostatisticians, where um, uh, we, we uh, play a key role in translating the results of, uh, of the analyses in ways that are um, understood by the public at large and also by the non-statistical researcher. And these elements are reflected in our in our programs um, as a part of the curriculum, we emphasize all these, uh, all these three elements. Um, the uh, students in our programs are also exposed to a large number of collaborations that our faculty are involved in, um, not only within the School of Public Health, where we um, have uh, um, a very strong uh, presence with, uh, with the um, other faculty and other research groups, but also, also in the health sciences um, at large. And I'm not going to um, to list them all, but um, they cover what uh, uh, a, a wide variety going from cancer to Alzheimer's disease, uh, infectious diseases, including HIV, and uh, uh, now the um, COVID challenge, and uh, so on and so forth. Um, our students have already shown uh, great uh, signs of success reflected in uh, a large number of publications, in presentations at uh, conferences, uh, uh, at the national level and also at uh, the San Diego level and uh, also uh, in, uh, in a large uh, number of uh, um, increasing number of awards that, uh, that our students are uh, receiving, again, both at the local level and uh, uh, more generally. Um, I will uh, stop here with, uh, with, with the boasting and uh, again, uh, just want to, to welcome everyone and um, uh, tell you that we're looking forward to, uh, to working with you during your stay. And uh, um, we're, I'm sure that, uh, that you're going to have a great time here. And uh, um, we, uh, we wish you on behalf of uh, our programs, we, we wish you great success. Um, with this, I'm going to pass the uh, mic back to Dr. Brower. Thank you, Dr. Vida. I just have a couple more slides that I wanted to share with you. Um, I know that you'll, uh, it's been great hearing from the programs of all the exciting things expected for your education this coming year, but I know that you're interested in public health even beyond the classroom. And I just wanted to make you aware of some events and opportunities um, every month we have public health grand rounds where we have speakers invited from throughout the country, sometimes throughout the world, uh, talk on a variety of topics. So um, students are welcome to attend these um, talks, especially as they're, they're virtual still. Um, the programs have been really good, especially at the undergraduate level, holding a career panel in the spring. So be sure to uh, look out for communications from your program director or education coordinators about that. Uh, last year, we, we haven't, we weren't able to hold a public health research day, but hopefully um, we'll see what the pandemic brings us, um, but hopefully things will die down and events will be allowed again. Um, these are just some pictures from previous public health research days. It really gives a wonderful showcase for students to share some of the work, the latest work they've been doing. And there's been a lot of talk about trying to create a group um, for students to gather to talk about public health issues and um, things they'd like to advocate for change. And so that's something that um, you may keep your eyes open as we announce um, plans to open up groups talking about public health advocacy. And finally, um, this fall, we're hoping to convene a student advisory board. So as Dean Anderson mentioned, we have a lot of great strategic planning going on, and now we're getting to the exciting implementation stage, and we really want a student voice in all of the actions of the school. So again, we'll um, make sure there's announcements sent to your program, as well as available on the website, and how to apply to be part of this student advisory board. And one last thing I wanted to say is, even though this is a remote event, um, we are very excited that we do have an in-person uh, event following this 
Um, we're setting up a table in this parking lot here. <laughs> so this is uh, the parking lot near the Stein Clinical Research Building and the Medical Teaching Facility. Most of you, if you've had classes on campus before, know this is where most of your public health courses are taught. And we'll have faculty, staff, um, even education coordinators staffing this table. You'll be able to find it uh, because we'll have a big uh, blue and gold balloons as well as a school banner. And this is an opportunity for if you're local, if you're already on campus, please drive by or walk up to this table where we're gonna man it from two to four today and nine to 11 tomorrow. And it will be a chance for you to talk to um, your, your professors or your coordinator, as well as pick up a little bit of public health swag. So um, I hope to see all of you out there. I'll, I'll be at the table tomorrow, I, I think at uh, 10 o'clock. All right, with this, I'd like to pass the mic on to Dean Anderson. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you to everyone who's uh, spoken and participated uh, in our program today. You know, and for those of you who are joining us, if we're going to have a successful academic year, um, it really takes a, a village. It takes a lot of work. And I also want to acknowledge the hard work and thoughtfulness of our team of program directors, many of whom you've heard from, our student affairs officers. Um, they work diligently uh, to support us uh, and also our administrative assistants. To be a student is to be an activist. Um, you want to be an active participant in your learning and we welcome that here in the School of Public Health. Our experience as employees is also better when we're connected to the mission and the purpose of the school and we have multiple ways uh, for you to participate in the school. I would like to invite you to stay informed about the activities of the school, and I will share my screen here to show you uh, two ways in which uh, you can do that. So first, we have a communication uh, called the week ahead. Uh, it comes uh, through email. It's usually uh, on the very first day of the, of the school week to help uh, communicate what's happening in the school and the reasons why uh, these things are happening in the school. On a more routine basis, you can find announcements, news, great happenings um, on our Slack channel. And we invite you to join that Slack channel, hwsbh.slack.com, which is an online community. You can have bi-directional communication about uh, things that are important to you individually, as well as to our learning community. So I hope that you will um, join us in those two efforts. I also just wanna close by saying, you know, our students, they come to UC San Diego uh, because they're excellent students. They've worked hard, they've sacrificed, they've distinguished themselves amongst the best students in the country. And I'm sure I speak on behalf of all of the employees of the school when I say we are excited to have you continue your educational journey with us. I'm truly grateful for the work that we all have ahead of us. I hope that we'll find the wisdom uh, and the strength to fulfill the school's mission. I hope that together we're gonna nurture each other's hearts and minds and really open ourselves to everything that we have ahead of us so that we can, in this new school, embrace that wonderful history of public health that we've had here at UC San Diego since 1966 and yet boldly move forward into the future of public health as an amazing 21st century school. So thank you again, everyone, for being here today. And I welcome you to the academic year that kicks off tomorrow. And I hope that you will find yourselves um, nurtured and really just grateful that you decided to make the choice to come to UC San Diego. <laughs>